The following is a paid program by Zola Levitt Ministries. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Lepp presents Welcome to Israel. You know, we love bringing you these programs from ZLM. For 30 years, we've been documenting the miracle of Israel. Israel moves forward through prayer. And we thank you for your prayers for this ministry and your support because we know without that, we couldn't continue on. Yeah, we've been really enjoying taking up the mantle that Zola began and, and going forward with these messages about the prophetic timing of the Lord regarding the restoration of Israel. We come to you directly from Israel. We try to bring you programs that are encouraging, that are enlightening, that build up your faith or bring you to faith. One of the greatest pictures of Yeshua is the story of Joseph, the patriarch. In fact, our series, Joseph, Dreamer, Redeemer, was so popular that we're gonna show you it again in 2017. And we want to give you some highlights from that program right now. From the pit to the palace, from certain death to abundant life, Joseph, the patriarch who pictures Messiah. Zola Levitt presents Joseph, Dreamer, Redeemer. Stripped of his robe, Joseph laid at the bottom of an empty water cistern, beaten and bruised. Catherine and I descended the steps of a similar cistern in Jerusalem, where we experienced firsthand the loneliness of a pit well below ground level. We're here in the traditional spot of where Jesus was kept the night he was betrayed, the night before he went to the cross. We're in the pit, Miles. Yeah, just as Joseph was in the pit, a picture of the bigger pit to come, which was the death of Yeshua on the cross. Shevat <laughs> כדי שתוכל להכין את מצרים בשנים הטובות. There are so many parallels with the life of Yeshua. It's amazing. That's why we wanted to bring you this story. Joseph's story speaks of the suffering, 
and then the exaltation. Yeshua's story is one of suffering and exaltation. He comes as the suffering servant. He returns as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Even the parallel in the bride that is given to Joseph. Joseph is given an Egyptian bride. What a picture of the international church, every tongue and every tribe, People from every nation are being called out in this church age and being knit to the Jewish bridegroom of heaven. What a story. And now, at the end of the age, God has his eye back on his own brethren, his own Jewish people, the natural seed of Abraham. And we are recognizing Yeshua in greater numbers than any time since the book of Acts. <laughs> מבקש שתצטרף אליי, נוכל לא לגור כאן בגושר, קרוב לכאן. ואתם, כולכם, תוכלו להצטרף גם כן. אתם, נשותיכם, וילדיכם, בתונכם, מתקרכם, תצטרפו גם כן. מאחר וחמש שנים נוספות של רעב עוד לפנינו. ברכו את אשר וברך! Those were some scenes from our series, Joseph, Dreamer, Redeemer. What a terrific picture of Jesus. Amen. You know, Joseph is such a picture of how we need to operate in this world. Be ready to forgive. Know that people maybe have heard us, that God wants us to stand in a place of forgiveness. And I think so often of the Jewish people that do that very thing, Miles, mm -hmm. they have to continue to posture themselves for reconciliation. It's our joy to bring you these programs from the land, in the Temple Mount behind us, and we're here showing you the goodness of God in the land of the living. Yeah, it's really a story of restoration. Even the actors we get to use when we do the dramas, right. Jews and Arabs together, Beautiful. acting out the stories from the Bible. It's such a picture of God's desire for reconciliation. Well, we have had some real great feedback about the Days of Remembrance, our series that focuses on the Feasts of the Lord. In right. fact, you met someone yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I met somebody just yesterday who told me that they so impacted her heart that she actually made plans to come here. And then when she was here in the land, which the land can only do is cause something to be reborn in you, which mm. is the desire to return to the land that God has promised. Wow. So let's go to some scenes from Days of Remembrance. Passover has been called the crown jewel of the feast. It's the first of the feasts, and it comes in the spring. In fact, in Leviticus 23, we're mandated on the first month and the 14th day to keep the feast of Passover. Why? Because the most important thing that's happened in the history of man has been the shed blood of the lamb. And Passover is the picture, the story of redemption that comes due to the shed blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. This, all of these foods have a symbolic meaning as well. You see the feast we're about to partake of, but the, these, these particular symbolic foods, we have the, the burnt sacrifice of the lamb pictured in that bone. We have the bitter herbs, the maror. We have the charoset, which is a, a picture of the, the work and the labor of being in the land of Egypt and the deliverance that God brought from the building of the bricks and making the pyramids and the other structures. <laughs> we have the karpas, the, the fresh new life yeah. of being delivered out of Egypt, out of the bondage of slavery. And then sometime in the Middle Ages, we believe, they added a roasted egg, which some people say uh, looks back to the burnt temple and the, the mm. mourning for us to be back in, in Yerushalayim and back to the temple. You're familiar with the word Pentecost, but the Hebrew, Shavuot, speaks of the Feast of Weeks. It's 50 days after Passover, and it takes place seven weeks and one day. It's the day after the Shabbat, the 49th day. So 50 days, Feast of Weeks, and it's one of the three major feast periods. We have Passover, Shavuot, and Sukkot, Tabernacles. Sinai, when the word was received 50 days after, the leaving of Egypt. The Jewish people come to the foot of Mount Sinai, and just as they gathered in Mount Sion in the, in the book of Acts, there is this, uh, in Sinai, a, a, the, the word is given amidst thunder and lightning and this, this manifest presence 
of God Almighty thundering and shaking and, and just overwhelming the people gathered at the foot of the mountain. Well, similarly, as Yeshua promised, when the believers gathered on Mount Zion, there was spirit came to them with tongues of fire. There was a mighty rushing wind. There was the same kind of power, authority of God, manifest presence of the Lord came to the believers and birthed this new thing that God was doing in the earth. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Teruah is full of the blowing of the shofar and the announcing of the appointment we have with God. It's a time of repentance. It's a time of remembrance. In fact, Genesis 22, the binding of Isaac, the Akedah, is the signature verse and the signature passage that is spoken of during this season. On this holiday, on this feast day, we speak about the binding of Isaac. Why? Because Isaac pictures the promised son to come. The 40 years prior to the destruction of the temple, which mm. was in 70 AD, yes. that God rejected the Yom Kippur sacrifices every year. Amazing. So for 40 years, the Jewish people were not forgiven. And, and there were four different signs. We don't have time to go into each sign. But these signs would tell them whether or not God forgave the people. Yes. In those 40 years, God did not. Now you have to ask yourself, wow. what happened 40 years before 70 AD? Amazing. Yeshua died as the ultimate once for all sin and for all time sacrifice. He died, gave his life as the ultimate Yom Kippur sacrifice. Incredible. You know, the feasts of the Lord are not just for the Jewish people. They are for us as Gentiles to learn of the Moedims of the Lord, the set times, the appointed times where God ordains to meet with his people. Yeah, it's so amazing to be here on the Mount of Olives. We hear the call to prayer for the Muslims. Yes. There was a shofar a few minutes ago blowing. It is such contention in the atmosphere spiritually, but it's the opposite of what God intends because He desires all that nations. all people would come to know Him, yeah. know His love and not be at odds with one another. In fact, He says that He's not willing that any should perish, but all come to everlasting right. life. It's really important that we are here in the land proclaiming this news from a Jewish perspective at this time. Yes, especially at this time as the world is in tumult and as we're looking towards the second coming of the Lord. I love pathetic. how the, the story of Ruth talks about that knitting into the commonwealth of Israel, that, that beautiful picture where she says, Amicha ami velohecha Elohai, your people shall be my people and your God my God. What a picture of the heart of the Lord. Yeah, I'm so grateful that God brought us together, mm. Miles, and as we journey on, May, may we continue to do what God has called us to do. Yeah, you know, we are so grateful that you partner with us, you pray for us, you send us. We can't do this without you. There's no large funding organization behind us. This is a individual by individual community effort. And we're grateful that you are seeing this picture of Ruth, that you may feel like you are a Ruth, Absolutely. knit into the Commonwealth of Israel and together we get to proclaim the goodness of God and the reality of Yeshua, his Jewish identity, and the beautiful call to all the nations for revival. Both of those things are happening now. And so that's important that we come here and bring you the message, proclaim the story of Yeshua from these mountaintops. And we are grateful to come and do it. This year, we actually were able to begin a new series that you'll be seeing a few clips from. We're calling it Yeshua, Close Encounters with Yeshua. And it's really the story of the journey of faith, how people come to and maybe struggle with the idea of who He is in His divinity and in His humanity. And so here's a few clips now from 
close encounters with Yeshua. I didn't know what to do. I was a secret believer for four years. Wow. And during that time, I, I just didn't know who I could talk with. But after four years, the Lord led me to a Messianic congregation. And there I found I wasn't the only Jew in the world who believes. There are many more. Um, also, I grew up thinking that Christians hated me because I grew up with the stories of the Holocaust and so forth. And, and so what did I know? You know? And, and I found out in this congregation there were many Christians who loved the Jewish people. Wow. And that made such an impression on me that I, I went through a healing. This angelic being tells us not to be afraid that a savior had just been born here in the city of David. The Messiah born here in Bethlehem. <laughs> this angel says you will find him wrapped in cloth, laying in a manger. In a manger where we feed our sheep. And then an amazing army of angels above us, praising God, saying, Uva'aretz shalom al bnei adam asher otam ratza. Peace on earth. Good will to all men. I tell you, it was unbelievable. We hurried to Bethlehem, where we found a babe along with his parents, Mary and Joseph. I have to wonder, who am I that I should gaze upon the face of the newborn Messiah? On the eighth day, according to the law of Moses, he was brought to the temple in Jerusalem. It was there that he was given the name Yeshua. Salvation! <laughs> We're sitting here and I'm pretty sure that the, the accounts of the New Testament came out maybe from this hall. Yes. Because the first believers, the first followers of Jesus Christ, the eyewitnesses of Jesus' life, mm -hmm. They gathered here and they were saying, I was there. You remember when the catching of the fish, I was there with the blind, <laughs> was healed. And they were building the story, <laughs> their memories, their experience, and their beliefs. Even the testimony that you are witnessing of, of this wonderful priest that mm. we got a chance to hear his testimony. Mm. So here, Miles, a Jewish believer and a Catholic believer, mm testifying about Jesus' Jewish identity and so excited yeah. about the miracles that are happening in Magdala. Yeah, it was very encouraging to meet this Catholic priest and to see that he is a born-again believer Absolutely. in the church, but he is a born-again believer yeah. with real fellowship preaching and gospel. preaching the gospel. It was so encouraging yeah. to spend time with him. I'm told that the words of the prophet Ishaya were read today in our synagogue. Apparently, it was read perfectly by Yeshua ben Yosef. I've known Yosef for years. He's a simple carpenter. And his son, Yeshua, seems to be a fine man, blessed with special wisdom. Reports are that Yeshua had a remarkable immersion in the River Jordan recently, where the heavens opened up and the very voice of Adonai was heard. After his reading, Yeshua proclaimed that the words of Ishaya had been fulfilled. Good news for the poor, the imprisoned, the blind. I want to believe it. I really do. But here, in Nazareth, we need to see it first. Then we believe. We're a little further down the mountain now, the actual Garden of Gethsemane. It was a place, this very place, or something exactly like this, where Yeshua came to be pressed out for your salvation and for mine. We are so grateful to be here on the Mount of Olives with the good news of Yeshua 
In the background, you may hear the Muslim call to prayer. It's the season of the shofars coming up to Rosh Hashanah. We just really see that there's all this tumult in the world, all this conflict, and yet in the midst of it, the good news of Yeshua cuts through all of that. It's a mandate to us. In fact, Romans 1.16, it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach, for it's the power of God to salvation to all who believe, to the Jew first and also to the nations. Yeah. And we have the opportunity of bringing this to people. Right, we're so grateful that you're helping us to be here in the land and to proclaim the good news of the Lord here in Jerusalem. It is the birthplace yes. of all things and it's the combination of all things. Yes. So it's, you know, we're not we're not afraid of the of the birth pains no. because God has a prophetic plan and that's what this ministry stands for is to show you his prophetic plan plan yes. with the Jewish people and with the nations. Yes, it's so amazing that Yeshua himself said in John 4, salvation is of the Jews. The covenant comes through the Jewish people, but everyone is welcome to come into this love with the Lord and with each other. It's just that we have to say yes to him, and that sort of is the, uh, the tipping point that we're looking for. Well, we are always interested in bringing you prophetic messages yeah. about the, where we are in the world and how close we are to the coming of the Lord. And so we, one of our most popular series lately has been Times of the Signs, which really speaks about uh, the events that are taking place and puts them in a biblical context so we can understand how this Bible is coming true in our lifetime, how the headlines are catching up to the Bible. So here are some excerpts from Times of the Signs. In Matthew chapter 24, it's talking about all the signs that will come before the Lord Jesus returns to the earth. And it's Jesus gives all this long list of signs. I always think it's interesting when people say we shouldn't be looking for signs, but when Jesus' disciples said, well, it'll be the sign of your coming in the end of the age, he didn't say, well, don't worry about it. He gave this long litany of signs. I have to search hard to see if there's any possible sign that isn't converging right now, and I haven't found one yet. For instance, mm -hmm. Russia is involved in a major invasion of Israel in Ezekiel 38 and 39. It includes Iran and Turkey. The relationships Russia is building with Iran and Turkey are uh, stronger than ever, and Iran and Turkey are adverse to Israel. I mean, all, that's one thing. Right. What about, it says in Revelation 11, there'll come a time when two witnesses who are preaching Jesus will be killed by the Antichrist, mm -hmm. and it says the whole world will see them. Right. 100 years ago, they used to say that Bible can't be true. How could the whole world see two guys lying in the streets? Well, I'll pull out my cell phone and I'll tell you, I can see them on the internet on my cell phone, my iPhone. That's right. Uh, what about the mark of the beast? Someday they'll say there'll be no one will buy or sell a cashless society. Well, what about the biometric chip technology we got right now? I call these days the last days of the last days. Wow. I've heard a painfully ironic statement that uh, Jewish and Christian martyrs say, I will die for what I believe. And Muslim martyrs will say, you will die for what I believe. The name Allah comes from one of the many gods that was worshiped in the desert. He used the name of the moon god. In fact, the crescent and the star that you see throughout the symbolism of Islam has a great connection to the Baal worship of history to the worship of the mother-son cult, to the worship of that which is not of Jehovah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are different. Islamic State under al-Baghdadi has a desire to set up a caliphate, a worldwide kingdom. He calls himself self-appointed caliph, the spiritual leader. He's doing everything, and the man is brilliant. Strategy is his number one expertise. They are capturing Christians 
in the area where they're in control, they're beheading the adults, they're burning the children alive. You know, we have this brokenness from the fall of man, but God is going to restore all of us who say yes to him to a place that is like the Garden of Eden and possibly even more glorious yes. because it will have no corruption in it at all. The fall will be over and the restoration will be complete. Yeah, and we'll know those loved ones that have gone yes. before us. You know, everything that we partake of in this earth that is good will be magnified in this heavenly Jerusalem, in this heavenly place that we're going to. And we do not want one of you to be left out. Mm -hmm. And so remember, do not be afraid, do not be a coward, do not shrink back in these times, mm -hmm. for God himself will give us the strength, the hope, the peace, the faith that yes. we need to persevere, and he himself will fulfill all of the feasts with the trump of God, and he himself will call us home and then come again and tabernacle with man. We're planning a new prophecy series for 2017. It doesn't have a name yet, but we want to really update all of you on where we are in time because things are changing rapidly in America, in Israel, the Middle East. Nations are aligning in new ways. They're really aligning according to the Bible. And so we really want you to hear about that and see that from the land. Uh, we, we just feel like the, the scriptures in Esther are really relevant for who you are and who we are together. Think about this, how Mordechai, my Hebrew name, how Mordechai said, who knows, but you've been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. And I think together Absolutely. that we can accomplish great things in proclaiming the good news of the Lord. Right. Well, we've always felt like this is part of our mandate to the church to, to be that strength to this people, the Jewish people here in the land, and to stand with them and to not hold silent, but to be that voice. Mm. And you, by supporting us, is enabling us to help us to bring these messages, to awaken the church to their shared destiny, and to awaken Jewish people to their covenant promises. Yeah, you know, we're here in the midst of the conflict. We were right behind us is the most contested real estate on planet Earth, the Temple Mount. And we hear the Muslim call to prayer, it's Friday, and so the energy is up regarding Friday prayers for the Muslims. And in the midst of that, the, the, the hope, yeah. Hatikva, the hope is that the voice of the Lord, Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace, would be heard in this land. And that's Absolutely. really what we're going for. We really want to continue to bring the voice of the Lord to you so that you can stand with what's happening here as we look towards the second coming. Amen. We're really getting close to the coming of the Lord and we want to be able to continue to work with you together. It's a privilege for us and I believe it's a privilege for you because you've been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. And we always like to close our program with a reminder from Psalm 122, verse 6, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.